speak about that goal. Oh, India's greatest footballer, Sunil Chetri. One of my economics teacher asked me, why do you keep wasting your time playing on the football pitch? Why were you wasting your time in the economic class? <laughs> Whenever I play Pakistan, the moment the whistle blows, something happens. Don't kick the Pakistanis, kick the ball. <laughs> and the message to kids now, sir. Whatever the hell you become, you better be good at it. Because they suddenly uh, sprung uh, Sunil on me, otherwise I would have come... You know, I have... Uh, two English clubs have given me their T-shirts with my name on it, I would have come with that <laughs> They would love to know the clubs, sir. Uh, I got an Everton one and an um, Arsenal one <laughs> Because we, we worked with Everton uh, with their players for some time, so they made a... the Everton players made a T-shirt for me with my name and number eight on it. I didn't like it, I want to go two numbers up, but <laughs> So how was the experience, sir, talking to the Everton players? Was it the first time you're meeting players? Uh, no, I've, I've... we worked with the Indian hockey team and things like that before. But uh, Everton invited us because uh, <coughs> their physio went through our programs and his life dramatically changed and he said, our players have to go through this. Uh, you know Tim Chahill and others who are there at that time. So we worked with them for a few weeks and they... I think they, that year in the Premier League they finished uh, number seven or six, I think. That, that's good for you. They did well. <laughs> and by the way, Tim Kale Superstar is here in India now, playing in the Indian Super League. Really? Yeah, he just signed for Jamshedpur FC. Oh, I didn't yeah. know. I thought he was playing in China. He was. This year only already signed for Jamshedpur FC. Oh. And uh, we'll see him in ISL. <laughs> I think a lot of the, lot of you guys do not understand how how important words are for a football player. You know, uh, I think I've watched what thirty. 30, 35 uh, videos of yours in the last two days. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I have an honest confession. It's one thing to watch a Messi or Ronaldo video where you can watch the video and keep doing your stuff because you're doing your own stuff and you're still watching it. But your video, everything has to shut. <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you why, sir, from my experience. Because you don't want to miss out, number one. And number two, you will not get it. <laughs> you, tell me, please. Although so many things that you say is so simple, which we ignore nowadays, it has to be shut everything and then you go to watch it. <laughs> so, thank you I, so much. I can also kick a ball. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll knock out something here. <laughs> so, the, the question that I want to ask, and I'm sure a lot of people will agree, that when you're fighting every day, to win stuff or to be a better version of yourself or to compete, how do you keep yourself calm? See, this is the whole thing. Uh, we think uh, it's been taught in the world that if you want to be successful, you got to do this. Uh, not necessary because in anything it is true, in every aspect of life it's true, but let's talk football. Even in football, well, there are some players who play very aggressively. They are not necessarily the greatest players. Essentially, you don't have to fight with anybody. You just have to kick the ball in the goal. Something well, I'm not trying to make it simplistic. Of course, there are other people playing, but we are supposed to play with them. We are supposed to outplay them, not fight them. Fight them means we have to go against them. To play means to miss them <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. Essentially, you have to miss those guys and get to the goal, not fight with them. If you have the intent of lighting, fighting with them, obviously, you will go ahead on. I must tell you this, I was... Uh, this was uh, probably 
early 2000, maybe 2003 or 4, we had worked with the previous uh, earlier team and Pargat Singh was uh, heading the, uh, the hockey team. But later on, all of them had retired and uh, Dilip Turki was heading the team. He's from your region, yeah. right? So, I was just passing through Chennai airport and uh, this uh, secretary of the Indian Hockey Federation came up to me and said, Sadhguru, our boys, they're all going to Champions Trophy to Germany. This is the first time they're even going out of the country, many of them. Please come and say something. So I walked down and uh, they had some kind of a, a psychologist who was trying to pep them up. He was uh, telling them, Aapka maa baap ka ijat hai isme, desh ka ijat hai <laughs> One billion people, one billion people are waiting for you to bring champion's trophy, you cannot fail them. These are all eighteen, nineteen-year-old boys. <laughs> They're like one billion people and <laughs> maa baap ka ijat <laughs> Then I looked at this, these guys are just terrified <laughs> So I, I… when my turn came, I went up and asked, I said, you guys know, you… you guys like to play hockey? He said, yeah. I said, you know hockey or you just like… No, no, we know how to play. So I said, the moment you get on the airplane, forget goddamn India and your parents and everybody else nonsense. All you have to do is, you must have lust to put the ball in the goal. You don't even count, somebody else will count <laughs> Your business is to constantly see the ball is in the goal, in the opposite goal, of course <laughs> And uh, no, but uh, they have to beat Pakistan. I said, you don't have to beat Pakistan, you just have to hit the ball. Huh? Why do you want to beat Pakistan with a hockey stick? <laughs> you just have to hit the ball. But these kind of things have been built up that we are fighting somebody. You don't have to fight anybody. People are always thinking, fighting spirit, killing instinct, all this not needed. If… if we train people from an early age that they have to be just smooth as silk, nobody should be able… even able to come near you. The greatest players were like that, they were just running away with the ball, all others running all over, not knowing where they're going. So, essentially you don't have to fight anybody, you just have to get the ball where you have to. For this you don't need fighting spirit, killer instinct, any of these things. All you need is work on the skill, work on the skill, work on the skill, which doesn't come because you wish. <laughs> skill won't come because you desire. Victory will not come because you desire, every fool wants to win, but only those who have the competence will win in the end. <laughs> that really makes sense. In fact, India is playing Pakistan today, sir. <laughs> uh, and you won't believe in the morning, uh, our under-23 team has gone to SAF Cup. The rest, all the other SAF nations, they are bringing their senior team. But all of us seniors uh, are not playing in this tournament. Of course, I'm here. Uh, so I had to send a message. Before a game, I sent a message in the group. I did tell them, boys, no red cards. Do not get emotional. Don't think about it's a game against Pakistan. Don't kick the Pakistanis, kick yeah. the ball <laughs> But sir, why I message them is because whenever I play Pakistan, I did play Pakistan, it is very strange, sir. We are having lunch, everything is fine, bhai jaan, aap kaise hai, aap kaise hai, and all the stuff. The moment the whistle blows, something happens and I want to… Yeah, I, I, I want to be honest, something happens and you think the game is more than the game. <laughs> I think it's because it's ingrained in our brains. No, no, it's seventy years of negative emotion <laughs> And because I've experienced this, uh, I, I send them a message, I know it's going to make no difference because they will get it in the pitch and they will think the same thing that I was thinking. <laughs> but still I told them no red cards and stuff like that and… Uh, Tell them just kick the ball. Yeah, true. It's not the green players. <laughs> Uh, it, it actually really makes sense sir, because whenever I am down in my sports, whenever I think uh, I haven't played well or I haven't scored goals or I'm getting abused or stuff like that, I go back to myself and think, why did I start playing football? It's because I enjoy it and I love it. And suddenly when I do it, the whole thing goes numb and I play better. But then again I forget it. 
<laughs> after like six, seven months of good football, and again when I start playing bad because you play good and you That's play. That's why I put up so many videos on the YouTube. <laughs> Though I'm saying the same thing, it looks like I'm saying something new to you. <laughs> That's true. That's true, sir. No, I, I I have watched a lot of videos of yours, and what I think, and I'm sure a lot of people agree to it. It's so many simple things said in such a simple manner, but because we want to complicate our lives, suddenly we think, wow. <laughs> Please tell me. Can, can, you, can you hear me, every one of you? So when I see your videos and I think, uh, at that moment I think, wow, what a point. <laughs> then I go to my bed and I think, that is basic. <laughs> Why didn't we think about this? You know what I mean? And, and, and the beauty of it is, sir, you, you explain it in such a simple way. It's so easy to understand. And I just hope when you're fighting so much in our lives, you understand that and take it on board. Oh, uh, I don't know all these people, what they're fighting, maybe domestic stuff <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, even if, uh, let us say, you're in a fighting sport, let's say you're in boxing, so all you have to do is stamp on his foot and he gets so angry, after that he's nothing. <laughs> Once he gets angry, he's nothing. He can be knocked down in no time. <laughs> Even if they're much bigger than you, it doesn't matter, they're gone. So the moment they get emotional, the fundamental efficiency and competence of your body and your mind drops. In that state, how are you going to win? You're only going to dream of winning. You're not going to win any game, you're just going to dream about it. So, when there is substantial medical evidence today to show that only when you're in a pleasant state of experience, your body and your mind functions at its best. It doesn't matter what is the nature of sport or academics or music or whatever we are doing. What is the nature of activity doesn't matter. Whatever is the nature of activity, Essentially, success in the physical world is just how well you harness your body and your mind. That's all it is. And these two things you can do best only when you're in a pleasant state of experience. You must… Uh, we would like to see you next time when I come and watch you in the game, I will definitely come. Uh, we want to see you running on the football field with a big smile on your face. And my favorite player is Ronaldinho <laughs> <laughs> That… Uh, that makes so much sense, sir. You said stepping on the foot and making the other guy crazy. <laughs> do you… do you guys remember Zinedine Zidane? Yes. Yeah. Do you remember him? Yes. Sir, probably well, one of the best players in the world. Yes, I know. And you know what happened with Matarazzi? <coughs> and France didn't win that game. So that makes so much sense, <laughs> sir. So much sense. Sir, but it's so difficult to keep your calm when somebody's elbowing your face and your eyes are about to pop out. See, uh, what counteraction you need to take, I won't suggest now. But if you need to take that action, also you must be in the best form of physical and mental state. So, well, people provoke you, people poke you in the ribs, they do all kinds of things, not just on the football field. All over Bangalore, they're doing it every day <laughs> Yes <laughs> At least there you, you have an umpire. If he pokes you very badly, there is a card. Here, nobody to give you a card. <laughs> People are poking you all over the place <laughs> So, it is not in any one arena, it is there everywhere. In some places it may be physical, in some places it may be mental or emotional or whatever kind, but people are poking you in the ribs all the time, one way or the other. So, question is just this, are you competent to live in this world or not? Essentially, it comes down to that, isn't it? Well, the football game as it was in sixties and seventies, people broke their thigh bones and hip bones, that's not there anymore. There are more red cards out there. Little bit of violence means he goes out. Any intentional violence, they're going out these days. But that was not the case. If you played a game with uh, Uruguay or something, you come back with a broken hip or something like this <laughs> So. How do I do this? It's very simple. See, uh, suppose… Uh, suppose we give all of you 
let's say soup making ingredients. If I give all of you the same soup making ingredients, do you believe that all of you will come up with the same kind of soup? No. Similarly, that's all that's happened with us. All of us are fundamentally same ingredients. See in how many ways we've become. So it's a soup making skill. <laughs> the question you're just a chemical soup. I'm saying this is a chemical soup because whatever is the human experience of peacefulness, of joyfulness, of blissfulness, of ecstasy, of agony, of, of misery, of stress, anxiety, whatever you name it, all human experience has a chemical basis to it. So this is a chemical soup. Question is only are you a great soup or a lousy soup? And to become a great soup, how much do you think meditation helps? <laughs> so, I'll tell you why I'm asking this, sir. So, when I was going through this bad phase and I'm 30 plus now, so you tend to overthink. So, I went to this guy who, who told me that you go to meditate and it'll help you. And he gave me some ideas of how to meditate. So, the way I meditate is in a, in a no noisy room, alone, I speak to myself. And I've realized that it helps me. And I also realized that how much I never spoke to myself. I'm speaking to my team. I'm speaking to everyone. But just now you were saying you were listening to my videos. <laughs> what? So that is, so that is binge watching, sir. That is now. <laughs> I'm talking about eight months back. And then I realized when I'm talking to myself, I realized how much I've ignored myself when it comes to talking. So could you please emphasize on how important it is to meditate and to actually talk to ourselves? Uh, talking to yourself, uh, well, that happens in Nimhans <laughs> Well, let me tell you, what you're trying to do is to talk yourself out of things. You're trying to talk yourself out of certain things which tend to happen repeatedly. Some compulsive actions and compulsive behavior, you're trying to talk yourself out of it. But you must understand this, the nature of human mind is such, what you don't want is what will happen in your mind. Right now, as an experiment, we'll include the children also, huh? Next ten seconds, nobody should think of a monkey <laughs> What did you think? Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> so if you say, I don't want something, only that will happen. Because in the very nature of our mind, it is made like this, there is only addition and multiplication. There is no subtraction and division in this mind, in terms of thoughts, I'm saying. If you say, I'm having too many thoughts, let me divide it or let me subtract it, there's no such thing. If you touch it, it will plus, 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 it will go. If you try hard, it'll become multiplication. Plus will become like this, <laughs> it'll multiply because this is a vehicle where all the three pedals are throttled. Whatever you touch, boom. So in this mind, you do not employ such methods. There are some things psychiatrists, psychologists and others are giving cathartic ways that you talk yourself out. What you would abuse that guy, you abuse yourself and be done with it here before you go on the football field, this kind of stuff. But there is no abuse hidden in you. There is no anger hidden in you right now, is there? No. There isn't right now. Once in a way you create it. Why do you create it? Why would you create something that you don't want? You create it because one thing is somewhere you believe it's a kind of power. Most people believe anger is power, but when it overtakes them, they suffer. When they give a little dose to somebody and they get scared, they enjoy it. You know, I did boom and that guy got scared, it's nice. So once you think it's power, when it becomes overpowering over yourself, then it's a disaster. So people can propel themselves into action with negative emotions like anger, resentment, hatred. Hatred is a fire which can make people do many, many things. A whole lot of people have done intense uh, conquering and, you know, invasions out of hatred. 
Powering yourself with negative emotions like this is... You know, uh, in the villages and small towns in Karnataka, this used to be there at one time, fortunately it's ended I think these days. When the Diwali comes, it's coming right now, what they will do, uh, they will find a donkey and tie a string of crackers to it, its tail. Poor donkey, when the crackers start bursting, the donkey will run faster than a racehorse, terrified. But this is not the way to perform. This is going to cost life, this is going to destroy you in many ways. Well, Mr. Bolt runs very fast, not because his tail is on fire, because he's prepared his legs and lungs, because behind those legs and lungs, there is a dedicated life, a life that is devoted to doing what they want to do. This is one thing we must understand, whatever you want to do, whatever it is, whether it is music, art, sport, business, spirituality, it doesn't matter what. Unless you're absolutely devoted to what you're doing, you will never do anything significant. You will do mediocre stuff, you will survive, make a living. But if you want to do something significant, you must be absolutely devoted to whatever you're doing. Only then, it will bring you to a place where you're significant in what you're doing, otherwise, nothing. So, Mr. Bolt, people know him only like this. You've not seen him training? Day in and day out they'll be training, they can't eat what they want, they are careful about everything, every drop of water he drinks or what, everything is measured and taken care of. But his glory is just nine seconds. Those nine seconds, has years of preparation <laughs> That really makes sense, sir. And uh, of course, I didn't want to interrupt you, but... So the reason why I asked you this, and it makes sense, is because when I was talking to myself, I do talk to myself. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. You come to me for three weeks, because you said I'm over thirty, which is that's a concern for a footballer. It is. Yeah. For a sports person, it's always a concern because the life of a sports person is short, brief. You have to rise spectacularly, otherwise if you go step by step like you're in a management, uh, you know, thing, <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere, you have to rise like that. So over thirty is a concern. If you spend three weeks with me, I'll make you five years younger, how's that? Sounds like a deal. Don't be happy, the offer is only for me <laughs> No, so I, I'll tell you why it makes sense, sir, because when I'm talking to myself, the most I'm doing, I want to be honest, the most I'm doing is, do this, do this, do this, and why I say this, because right now it's about food. So my talking right now maximum is, tomorrow you got five meals, make sure you eat whatever is prescribed, and don't eat something that your body doesn't need. And so in the last six months, and food is one of the biggest thing in my career right now, has given me so much of uh, better results in terms of the way I think first. Because we all, thought, we, all, we all think it's about six packs and stuff like that. It is not. In the last eight months, I've realized I, I'm more happier just because I'm taking care of my food. And right now when you said that four years, the guy eats right and people don't see it and just the nine seconds, that makes so much of sense. And that's one of the reasons why I talk to myself a lot. Make sure you're disciplined, make sure you're thirty plus and yeah. make sure you don't waste time. You, you spend three weeks with me, I will talk, you one, talk to you once, after that you don't have to talk to yourself <laughs> That sounds like a deal <laughs> But for normal people, so what is the best way to meditate? What makes you think they're normal? <laughs> <laughs> For, for everyone who is not playing for BFC, what do you think is the best way to meditate? <laughs> now, we must understand, uh, the English word meditation does not say anything specific in the sense, if someone sits here with eyes closed, people think he's meditating. But as you said, you could be sitting here and talking to yourself, you could be thinking, you could be contemplating, maybe you're chanting a mantra, it's called japa, you may be doing tapa, which is a way of generating heat in the system, you may be doing uh, dharana, dhyana, shuna, shunya, samadhi, 
some yama like this, there are many, many things. English language is not descriptive when it comes to inner dimensions. English language is very good outside, technically, where materially it's a very good language. But when it comes to inner experiences, there are not enough words to describe the various dimensions of human experience that happens. So the word English meditation is very general, doesn't say anything specific. If we… if we understand… Uh, if we want to understand the word meditation as dhyan or dhyana, being in Karnataka it's dhyana, okay. <laughs> if you go to Tamil Nadu it becomes dhyanam. <laughs> so, if it is dhyana or dhyana that you're talking about, what it means is, if you sit here, your body's here, your mind is out there, what is you is somewhere else. That means there is a little distance between you and your body, between you and your mind. Once there is little distance between you and your body and your mind, suddenly everything is crystal clear. What you think is so complicated is very, very simple. It's just like, right now I came through… what a city you created, huh? <laughs> we… you know, there was a time when… Uh, when I lived in Mysore, if we just thought about it like that, this uh, 140 kilometers, those days it was a single track road, but we would… Uh, we would race to make it like in one hour thirty-five minutes, one hour forty minutes, like this. And we would come to Bangalore, ride down MG Road and again turn back and go straight back to Mysore. Impossible now <laughs> What a beautiful city it was and what have you made out of it in these last few years <laughs> It doesn't even feel like Bangalore, neither the temperature nor the visual, you know, visually, nor the traffic, nor the people. Most of them are talking Hindi. <laughs> <laughs> so, nothing feels like Bangalore and I see even Hitler is back on the shelf <laughs> So, this… this dimension of what you call as meditation is essentially a little distance. So, you're in the traffic, how bad it is. Suppose you took off in a airplane or a balloon, uh, you know, hot air balloon or something, you look down, this stuck-up traffic looks quite nice, <laughs> really. In the night especially, it looks quite nice when the traffic is jammed up. Have you seen this <laughs> from the airplanes? <laughs> but when you're in it, it's a totally different affair. When you're in it, the way you suffer it is one thing. Once there is distance, is a totally different affair. See, for example, this uh, planet is round, though Bangalore people think it's flat. It's only from Bangalore they started, right? But Earth is flat once again. You know this? Somebody wrote a book called Earth is Flat. From Bangalore? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> about Bangalore <laughs> So, forever we argued, we would have continued to argue, because if you walk up and down this floor, you can feel it's flat, of course. But we started flying, we looked down, clearly it was round. Then we went and stood on the moon and looked down, one hundred percent, it is round, no argument anymore. This is what you need to do with your mind and your body. There's a little distance, suddenly everything is crystal clear, simple things. For people have lived here for fifty, sixty years and they still don't know how to handle their thought and emotion. When are they going to learn? After thousand years? When? If… if you do not know how to handle your thought, how the hell did you live till now, I don't know. By accident? When you live by accident, anxiety is normal. How else can it be? Suppose accidentally you just… you don't know how to drive a… ride a motorcycle or a car, let's say. Accidentally it started rolling. Anxiety or no? Yeah. Picked up speed, fear or no? Yeah. Became very fast, terror or no? But if you know how to drive, the faster it goes, the better it is. Sure. Yes or no? The same with your mind and body. Because you are enmeshed in it, haven't figured a damn thing about it, it looks very complicated, little distance. This is dhyan, this is meditation in a way. 
So if you create that little distance, suddenly everything is clear. What looked so complicated is just a simple thing. That makes so much of sense, man. Every one of us, make sure you try this, huh? But while trying this, sir, and I want to be honest, and I, I know all of, all of them want to say this, while trying this, we're still going back to the cocoon. Still the same problem, the same issues. How do we, like... See, that is because you think meditation is some kind of an act. It is not an act. It is a consequence. If you cultivate your body, your intellect, your emotion and your energy in a certain way, meditation will happen as a quality, not as an act. People are doing ten minutes meditation, they will freak themselves after some time, for sure. A whole lot of people, this survey was done I think in ninety-four or ninety-six, I'm not very sure about the date, but sometime in the nineties, early nineties, the Nimhans Institute did a survey and they found eight percent of the inpatient who… inpatients, not outpatients, inpatients who come and stay in Nimhans for a period of treatment, eight percent of them came because of improper yoga and meditation. Because if you forcefully try to do something with your mind, it will freak. It's very important when you have been given, do you agree with me, this human mechanism is the most sophisticated machine on this planet, do you agree with me? Have you read the user's manual? Then how? Then how do you use it? <laughs> Just by accident <laughs> So just few tips of not doing this mistake, how, how, how to go about it? See, it is these titbits which have destroyed people <laughs> The reason, the reason why spiritual process has become a ridiculous circus. I'm saying this consciously. It's become a circus because everybody is trying to do it on the street side. On the street side, they want to see… Uh, teach Gita. Krishna waited for many years. Arjuna and Krishna, you have Arjuna board. Arjuna and Krishna were intimate. They know each other so well. But Krishna waited till the last moment where there's an extreme situation where Arjuna's mind is being crushed. He waits for that moment to give the teaching. But all kinds of idiots are reading it on the street corner. Without creating any situation, nobody knows what the hell it is, simply words and words and words. As you said, when you listen to it, suddenly you find you have to shut down everything and listen because as simple as it is, you don't get it because it is not its complex, but the simplicity is a problem for the human intellect. If you're trying to grasp things through… through intellect, complicated things you will grasp. Simplest things, people around me are always freaked because I'm telling them the simplest thing, but they're thinking through many things, most simple things, because it is very simple. Birth is not your doing. Death is not your doing, it happens, both of them happen. In between, you just have to be… huh? Just have to be Bindas <laughs> That's all. You don't have to give birth to yourself, nor do you have to kill yourself, both will happen naturally. What are you doing here? Everything is happening, you don't have to spin the planet and make it day and night, you don't have to do this and that, everything is happening. For you to be just here, be in tune with everything and receive the bounty of life, such a big mess because they are looking at everything intellectually. When I say intellectually, the nature of your intellect is such. If I ask you a question, do you want a sharp intellect or a dull intellect, you must choose, I'm going to bless you right now. So essentially, you want a sharp intellect, that means it's a cutting instrument. <clears throat> it's like a knife, the sharper, the better. You don't want a blunt knife, you want a sharp knife. Now, this is the only instrument you have in your life. For everything you use a knife. If you want to stitch your clothes, you use a knife. I, where's that girl gone? She, I think she used a knife on her pants <laughs> Is 
if you use your knife to stitch, you will leave it in tatters, isn't it? Yeah. That's all you're doing to your life, that is all. You are just leaving it in tatters simply because you're using a knife to handle everything. I must tell you this experience of mine. That was a time when I literally lived on a motorcycle, I rode across the country without without a destination, simply till I hit the borders and turn around and ride here, there, just wanted to see the country. Almost five and a half to six years, I literally rode across the country. So I was somewhere, I'm not sure whether I was in Madhya Pradesh or Uttar Pradesh, whole night I was riding. I was known for this even now <laughs> that I could ride for three nights and days continuously without sleep. Every day covering like anywhere between 800 to 1200 kilometers. Please do not do it yourself. <laughs> it requires a, a different personality altogether, <laughs> not advice, please. <laughs> See, now anything you do, you have to put a warning. <laughs> Young people have become like this. <clears throat> Otherwise, they will go and fall into the ditch. There is a ditch, danger, do not walk. When you are young, nobody need to mark anything. You have to have everything open and you know what the hell is happening. But you have to tell them, caution, speed, this, that. This is for old people over eighty-five when they're shaking. You tell them, where is the drain, where is this, where is that? But now young people are becoming like this because <laughs> they'll walk into anything <laughs> So true. Do you do that when you're playing football? No, sir. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I was somewhere… somewhere between either Madhya Pradesh or Uttar Pradesh, early morning, after a full night's riding, I stop for a, in a daba for a tea and to eat something. And I always fix my own motorcycle because when you're so much on the road, you don't want to give it to anybody. So my chain has become a little slack. This is a problem with the old bikes, yes, these days. Every bike, even now it happens, except the Harleys, they have belts, it's terrible <laughs> How could you ride on a belt <laughs> So chain has become slack, you need to take off a link and tighten it up. So I saw a garage, Mubarak Mechanical Works, it was written, a handwritten board. Then I thought, uh, there was a young, strapping young youth. I thought, okay, let him do it. I said, hey, why don't you ch tighten my chain? Then he, full of confidence, he came out. The only tools that he was carrying in his hands was a chisel and a hammer. I looked at his tool, I said, wait, before you touch my motorcycle, you don't have anything else? No, no, I can do it, chain, I can tighten it. I said, wait. I got up and walked into his garage and looked around. There was no other tool except chisel and hammer. <laughs> With this chisel and hammer, he fixes everything. But after he fixes, that's the end of it <laughs> Nobody else can in open anything or close anything after that. So, if you are using your intellect only, disregarding other dimensions of intelligence within you, this is how life will be. Mubarak mechanical works, Mubarak <laughs> I hope you got the point <laughs> I'm actually speechless. I made some points in my head. No, that's because you're good at talking to yourself <laughs> that... <laughs> That's a valid point. Uh, <laughs> it's only sometimes, guys. Next time I miss a goal, it's all right, man. He talks to himself. He's not going to score. <laughs> that, that, that's only sometimes. <laughs> there are so many kids over here, and uh, one of the questions that I thought of asking you, sir, is the same question that I asked my teacher. When I was young, uh, one of my economics teacher asked me, why do you keep wasting your time playing on the football pitch? and uh, you're not on time… I was just about to ask, why were you wasting your time in the economic class <laughs> So that's exactly what I did. So then I spoke to her, I said, Ma'am, I want to become a footballer. And that's why I was there and I'm, I apologize that I'm late. Then of course, she said me things that I can't say right now. <laughs> and then she complained to the class teacher that there is one guy who, is, who has lost his mind, Make sure you tighten him. So the class teacher came to me and she's like, what were you doing? What are we thinking? So I told her, I actually want to be a footballer 
and there's only one class which is called PT class for two periods in the whole week. There are kids who want to be in, in an IIT, a doctor, whatever. They've got eight, ten classes every week to, to encourage them. But I only had one, that two with white shorts and white t-shirt PT. There was no football class. And you're not supposed to dirty those white shorts. Yeah. <laughs> that was an instruction from home but I never listened. I was always dirty. But then I told her, then, then my chances of becoming are so, so dim. Because there's no practical what I do on the pitch. Nobody comes and tells me, you know what, this is what you did and this is what you're going to do. Of course, like my economics teacher, my class teacher said, shut up. <laughs> Think about what other kids are doing. So then I realized that it's not, I, I'm not going to get helped. And, and now when I meet kids sir, from, from different schools, they have the same issue. They have the same issue that sports-wise, we aren't teaching them more. And I think, and I believe, I may be wrong, Nothing else can teach you to be a better person than sports. This is what I believe. I may be wrong. Like the way I'm talking to myself. But anything that could happen in my life is only because of sports. And I'm not even talking about all the, 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 the accolades or stuff I've got. It has made me a better person. And then I realized, why couldn't we inculcate that in school? Why couldn't we teach them? How bad were you before this? <laughs> uh, okay. No, no. But that, that's true. And you know, I, I wasn't thinking of what I'm going to do. And I was... I was one of the kids where the parents are fighting, it's your, it's your, mis your, your mistake, no, no, it's your mistake, it's because of you, no, no, it's because of you. And then suddenly because of sports, everything changed. So everything changed. Only football made sure that I left everything and not think about anything else. So whenever there was football, it was all me there, thinking, concentrating, becoming, trying to become my better self. Rest, let's not talk about that. <laughs> no, the best thing about sport is, uh I think uh, we have to acknowledge because it was two days ago that it was the 125th anniversary of uh, Vivekananda speaking in Chicago. <laughs> well, most people would have not noticed this aspect of him. He said one thing, he said you are closer to the divine in kicking a ball than in prayer <laughs> That made me happy. Because you can pray without involvement. You can go to school without involvement. You can work without involvement. You can even get married without involvement, <laughs> yes. But you cannot play a game without involvement. And the essence of life is only in involvement. Without involvement, there is no life. How profound is your involvement will determine how profound is your experience of life. The question is not in what. Well, you found that involvement in sport, but it doesn't matter what. If somebody finds absolute involvement in something, they will know life in a certain way, which others will completely miss. Those people who are goal-oriented, that they want to get there, they want to get here, they want to become something at the age of three, you ask a little girl, what do you want to be? I want to be doctor <laughs> So from the age of three she is praying, lot of people should be sick <laughs> I'm saying market development is needed, right? <laughs> so this goal-orientedness has… this is a very western way of looking at life, always the goal. The finish line is more important than the step that you're taking right now. It's a foolish way to live. If you get to the finish line, you will still not be ecstatic. Your only ecstasy is somebody is behind you. It's a sickness that you enjoy other people's failures, it's a sickness. But if you make it, you will not be exuberant. If you don't make it, of course, you'll be broken. The important thing is to be, de be absolutely devoted to the process, what we're doing right now. How far will it get us? Depending upon our competence, it'll get us as far as it gets. How far we go in the world is also determined by the situations in which we exist, the times in which we exist. If you were kicking a ball really well a thousand years ago, you wouldn't be a national captain or nothing. Okay? Because thousand years ago, you kicked a ball really wonderfully, wouldn't mean anything. Can you kill a deer or can you chop down a tree or can you get this or that, that would have been the skill wanted. So it is the times. 
where we get, how far we get, the times will decide. But the question is only this, everything that you have, is it finding expression or no? That's all it is. Are you better than somebody? That is not even the question. Everything that you are, is it finding expression or you yourself are a big problem. For most human beings, they don't need any enemies, they're just doing great by themselves. <laughs> yes, they are. Every day their own thought, their own emotion, their own ideas, their own stupid philosophies, they're just destroying people. See, every human being has a certain genius in them, every human being. Only thing is, unless they find the right atmosphere and right level of involvement, that genius will not flower. And the sad story of… on this planet is, ninety-nine percent of the population never opens up their genius. They will live mediocre lives simply because they are interested in the goal, what will they get in the end? They want to know what will they get in the end, they're not interested in what's happening now. What will you get in the end? We will bury you <laughs> So I think to all the parents who couldn't open their own geniuses, make sure a kid has the chance. Because a three-year-old kid cannot say, I want to be a doctor unless you tell the kid. That's a great message. <laughs> so, th this is so common nowadays, I know it's so simple when you say it, but even when the parents meet, after like one session and I go and see them and I play with them, Sir, kya mera beta football player banega? So, I have no answer, sir. Ronaldo banega, Ronaldo. <laughs> Not Sunil Chetri. <laughs> right away. <laughs> sir, I, and I've got no answer, sir, because one beautiful thing that my parents did for me was they never asked me, what are you going to be? So whenever in my head I wanted to be the next lender pace, they let me be. I you to tell be them at… at… Uh, at fifteen yards, if your child can kick the ball into your face, <laughs> he will make it <laughs> No, uh, but to all the parents, that is very, very true. Uh, I hope there was a formula where, where I can give you and your kid can be someone he or she, but there is no formula. Let them be and uh, they'll find the way. As Guruji just told us, they'll find a way. If your children's lives matter to you, if they really matter to you, if their happiness matters to you, if their life matters to you, do not look at your children as some way of fulfilling all your failed ambitions about yourself. It's a… Child is a fresh life, it doesn't come from you, it only comes through you. You don't own it, it's in your custody. It's a privilege that this bundle of joy has come to you, it's for you to learn, it's not for you to impose your stuff. Because if the next generation becomes just like you, what is the point of having a next generation? They have to be something different. They have to do something else, otherwise what's the point? Very true. Kids, take the YouTube video of this, whenever parents are forcing you, make sure <laughs> Yeah. Whenever your parents are saying, sorry parents, be a doctor, be a this, be that, be a Ronaldo, be a Messi, this. I want to be myself and I'll make my own way. That's a great… that's a great weird one. Pakka, In, uh, make the video. Aspiring to be a Messi, you know, if just one alphabet goes, you're a mess <laughs> That's a… that's a really good one, sir, because <laughs> all of us will agree that we want our next generation to be better. Not better in the sense that they're competing, but just better. Things that… No, but sir, tell me one thing, why… why parents and that age group people say you things, and it's so true, the things that they couldn't do, like whenever you do want to do something, then any up see any yoga. Or whenever you want to try something, then any mat karo. Yeah, asa ni ho sakta. Stuff like that. See, parenting has become a very fear-based thing. Their idea of love is to be anxious all the time. Anxiety is being misunderstood as love affair. And most people, their love affairs, whatever kind, with their children, with their parents, with their lovers, or whatever. For most of them, 
love is beautiful only in the initial phase. After that, it's only anxiety. They're just anxious, what will happen, what will happen, what will happen? So, when you have children, of course there is concern because it's a fresh life, it needs protection, it needs an atmosphere to grow. Your business is just to… you're the soil for this new plant. You're not the sunlight, you're just the soil. Provide a rich soil, an atmosphere of love, joy, enthusiasm, you know? Children, if you're really concerned about your children's lives, this is all you have to do in your home. That your children should never see moments of anger, resentment, frustration, depression, all these things, your children should go up in an atmosphere of love, joy and exuberance of life. If you're really, really concerned about them, this is all you have to do. So what you need to do is not work upon them, but work upon yourself to see that you create that atmosphere. Because I want a coconut tree to grow, but I place it on my head, it's not going to grow. I have to find it good soil, only then it'll grow, isn't it? So your business is just to create the soil. There is an atmosphere outside, you cannot prevent it. There are other people outside who'll influence them. A child is not a hundred percent under your influence, it never was, but much more so now because they're exposed to various other things, there are technological ways of accessing the world. They may not even be listening to you, there is somebody else talking to them from somewhere else, all right? But if you provide them the soil of a very loving, joyful and exuberant atmosphere, you will see you will be the biggest influence on them. Otherwise, somebody else will take over. That is so nice. <clears throat> and… and with your permission, taking clue from that, I could go back and speak to my parents about everything, good, bad, whatever, my dreams, whatever I wanted to be, how stupid it may sound because kids are stupid when they are young, they say whatever they want to say. But I had the… I had the liberty of going to my parents and speaking whatever is there in my head. If your kid cannot come and talk to you, actually we have always… already lost the battle. If your kid cannot come and talk to you about what he or she wants, it's gone. That was a great, great thing. Make sure that uh, we listen to this and again the video, it works. <laughs> Whenever you are down and you are angry and whatever, the video. The kids know it, they'll show you for sure. <laughs> and the message to kids now, sir. Huh? Before they… now message to kids before they get, uh, you know what? <laughs> so Guruji has said, now you can't shout at us, you can't discipline us, you can't say this, you can't say that. The children must understand this because there are various levels of children here. The very young ones, leave them, there is no need to tell them anything. But others, they need to understand this. You don't have to become what your parents want you to become. I personally don't care a damn what you become. But whatever the hell you become, you better be good at it. That's all that matters <laughs> And being good at something will not come because you desire. There is a striving, there is an involvement, there is a certain devotion to what you're doing. People misunderstand… I'm, I'm specifically using the word devotion because people think devotion means going to the temple, church or mosque or something like this. No, just look at life and see. Whatever the arena of life, sport, art, music, business, whatever, has anybody gone to any significant levels without devotion? No. So devotion means unconditional involvement, not comfort and discomfort. When it's comfortable, I will do it. When it's not comfortable, I'll not do it. Well, we're sitting with a sports person, if you want to use that example, it is not comfortable to be a sports person. Every damn muscle hurts <laughs> Yes, <laughs> everything hurts. It is all nice for you to see in the television, they're just falling up and you know, flipping up and falling down. Do once like that, you won't get up for a month <laughs> Yes, most people don't know. And um, India being a cricketing nation, largely most people have only seen cricket matches, very few people have unfortunately have seen football, hockey and other matches, which should come back. I think it is to some extent making a thing, it was very wonderful you made that appeal. 
we all responded for you. <laughs> See, among the many games, for example, because India, a lot of people are playing cricket, uh, many of them on the street side playing with a tennis ball, they won't understand what it is. When you play with a cricket ball, it's one of the most dangerous games you can play. It's a hard ball and it is coming at like over 120, 130 kilometers per hour at you. And the biggest problem is it pitches and changes direction as it wants. It has a mind of its own. Most of the time even the bowler does not know where it will go, <laughs> not just the batsman. Yes, the… the pitch and the wind and so many things decide how it goes. So, people are watching on the television and advising how Tendulkar <laughs> doesn't know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, it's not that. When you're there, out there, it's a dangerous thing. Sport is a dangerous thing in many ways. People… You, it could break your body, just like that. And above all, even if you don't break, every day it's painful. It's painful and painful and painful. No matter what the hell is happening in your life, morning five o'clock you get up and run and do this and do that and all kinds of things. Most people cannot keep such discipline in their life. So, the important thing is there is a certain devotion to what you're doing. Otherwise you will not go through that pain. First bit of pain you will turn back and sleep. And uh, you know like we trek in the mountains, Every year I think, just now I came back for three weeks of uh, being in Himalayas, both in Nepal and Tibet. We are going up to seventeen five to eighteen thousand feet. Every year I think enough I've done. From the age of nineteen, almost every year I've trekked in the mountains. And I think it's enough. This sore muscles and bad bathrooms and everything, I say enough of it. But within two months, Mountains are again <laughs> calling you. And uh, at this stage in my life, it could be very painful. Painful means because we're pushing at a certain speed, it can be painful, but there is a acceleration, there is a certain joy, there is a certain indescribable experience of life which others will never know. So, it is not necessarily you have to climb a mountain or play football. You will know this, if you know that level of involvement in something, where it brings you to a sense of abandon, where it's almost like you are hanging between life and death at certain moments, those moments are an experience beyond anything. There are no uh, vocab… there is no vocabulary for that. When you touch that place, you know, you can cross anything. <laughs> I'm sure any number of times in the games, it happens <laughs> That's… that's actually so true. So whenever you guys find that thing, make sure you give it your best. That's all is required. So we spoke to the kids about the importance, the parents and the combination. Just for a… for a healthy, happy life, few tips, sir. <laughs> I put it in a spot now. Because that's all they want to know, trust me. See, if you want a healthy, happy life, it's a lot of thing to ask for. You want… you think you're going to settle it with two tips? It needs little more involvement, that's what I'm trying to say. If… if you think your life is worthwhile, if you think you are a worthwhile life, are you? Yes. If you are a worthwhile life… Come on guys, say yes at least. Yes. They're having a little… <laughs> Are you a worthwhile life? Yes! If you are a worthwhile life, it doesn't matter what somebody thinks, for you, this is the most precious life, isn't it? This is not just for you. You just try to catch an ant. An ant doesn't think, oh, I'm just an ant, let him catch me. <laughs> you think so? He does everything possible because he thinks he is a worthwhile life. Yes or no? Yes. He is the most precious life on the planet as far as he's concerned. True. That is same. That is true with every life, isn't it? That's true with you. But because we have a certain level of cerebral activity, we've gotten all mixed up. This is essentially an evolutionary issue. That is, 
this kind of brain is new in terms of evolutionary scale of things in these millions of years of existence, this kind of brain is new to us. And most people don't have a stable enough base to handle this kind of intelligence, that's what is driving them crazy. They don't know how to handle their own cerebral capability. What is the greatest gift has turned against people simply because of this. Otherwise, being happy, is it even an issue? When you were a child, you were naturally happy, isn't it? What happened? Brains became bigger and you didn't learn how to handle it. See, once you come as a human being, you are not as strong as an elephant, you can't run as far as… A ch fast as a cheetah or a tiger, you can't even uh, do tricks like a monkey. In every department, you are weaker than other animals. Only thing is you got an intelligence. But right now, that's the only thing human beings are suffering. Only because human beings are suffering their own intellect and their intelligence, that even stupid spiritual teachings are going on. To be peaceful, to find peace of mind is the ultimate goal of your life. Such people will only rest in peace. <laughs> to be peaceful is a challenge. Essentially, your intelligence is turned against you, that's all, isn't it? Otherwise, what is the big deal about being peaceful? If you don't do anything, you're peaceful. No, all the time this is happening. <laughs> this is an evolutionary issue, isn't it? <laughs> so you must understand this, that for this intelligence, you do not have a stable enough base. If you do not work towards a stable enough base, your intelligence can create so much mess for you, it's unbelievable. You can call it stress, you can call it anxiety, you can call it madness, you can call it whatever you want. Essentially, your intelligence is working against you. Once your intelligence is working against you, no power in the universe can save you. Yes or no? Suppose your right hand starts punching you in the face, only way is to tie it down, if it doesn't work, we'll have to amputate. Yes or no? Yes. Somebody else is punching you, there are many ways to handle it. My own handing is punching me, well, how to handle this? Right now, tell me, do you need any help from outside or you can cause lot of misery to yourself? You don't need any outside help, isn't it? So that's all you need to fix. You don't have to aspire for peace or happiness or meditation or bliss, nothing. Your body and your mind should take instructions from you and nobody else but you. You get the point. <clears throat> so advices are open from other sides but eventually you think about for yourself. It's not about you think for yourself. I'm saying it's intrinsic and essentially this mechanism is built this way that this body should work for you. True. Yes? If it is working for the opposite team <laughs> You know, in this World Cup there were four or five self goals <laughs> Or if your mind is working against you or for somebody else, this is ultimate slavery, isn't it? Somebody can decide. See, if we decide, young people are here, if I tell them, you must read only these books, you should not read these books, they'll say, what, we don't have the freedom? Are we slaves to you? But now, somebody can decide what happens within you. Is this not the worst form of slavery? Somebody can decide whether you can be happy or unhappy. Is this not the worst form of slavery? but you are accepting it as romance <laughs> Oh, I cannot live without you <laughs> Tomorrow's headlines, thousand people were in Central, Central Mall, out of that five hundred broke up the next morning <laughs> <laughs> Don't do this No, no, see I cannot live without you or I cannot walk without a crutch. Is there any difference? 
I know we all are laughing right now, but this is serious. Please understand this. No, this is serious. This is really, really very, very serious. I've got few friends who are like that, and they're miserable. No, <laughs> on a serious note, this is. Please so, understand this. People think if they are helplessly in need of somebody, they are in love. No. Love is a conscious process that you decide to turn your emotions into a certain level of sweetness. If you can do it with everybody, it's fantastic. Not possible, at least with one or two people. This? But right now, most people are not capable of doing that unless they're biologically involved one way or the other. They must be parents or children or husband and wife or, uh, uh, you know, partners or something. But biology. Essentially what this means is, your intelligence is on the back burner, your biology is the front end of your life. As we already looked at it, if you compare yourself to any other creature, biologically you are a much weaker creature than most creatures on the planet. Yes or no? Yes. So if you use biology as your front end, uh, your life will be obviously a mess. You will see grasshoppers are living better than you. They are. Got the point? Yes. Sure. Yes. I see a big <laughs> smile on the gentleman's face. <laughs> no, but I, again, sir, I, I, I have to. <coughs> they're so simple words. And suddenly start thinking. Like me, I see so many faces, they're thinking, hi, yaar, you the Sita. You know, it made sense. No, that is the whole problem. They're all thinking. <laughs> that is the main problem. I have no thought in my head. I'm simply looking. I'm just looking at life, I'm not thinking of life. What can you think about life? It's there for you to see and experience. It's not for you to think and write a PhD paper on it. Is, the, is there somebody who is doctor life? <laughs> I have to be honest, sir, but this is difficult. What? This is… this is… like the way you say I look at life and it's difficult for norm… No, tell me, do you know… okay, do you… When you're playing football, do you see the goal and ball, ball and goal, or do you just think about the ball and goal? So that's the only thing, time when I don't think, I just play. So that's the best time of your life? Yes, by far. So I'm saying, why isn't it not like that every moment of your life? I made my life like a football game every moment of my life. No, I… I actually that is… no, that is very true because the guy the, who helped me in meditation, he asked me, when is your I... mind… <laughs> not help me. <laughs> so he asked me, he asked me, when is your mind not thinking about anything and calm? So I was thinking, there is no time, you're thinking about this, that, whatever. But then I realized before a game and during a game, I'm thinking nothing, I'm just reacting to what is happening. That's the only time when I'm thinking of nothing. See, you can… you can be doing many things and thinking and doing many things. You are a mess with general life, but it doesn't show up. In the sport, if you're thinking, you will show up immediately, everybody will boo. So you will get it that you're… you're thinking about the ball, you're not seeing the ball. <laughs> That's a dangerous thing to do. So I can't play for twenty-four hours, but make sure you inculcate sports in your life. So at least for that moment of time, you're not thinking, I'm just reacting. No, no, twenty-four hours should become a game. Intense involvement, just like… When you're in a so-called important match, this is an important match. Hello? Yes. Is this not an important match Very today? Yes. No, I'm not talking about the India-Pakistan stuff <laughs> Right now, for all of us, is this not an important match? Yes. Every moment of your life, is your life an important match? Yes. And in this match, you're playing all by yourself. Others may play with you, but you're not really playing against somebody. You're not really playing against somebody, this is more like golf. So, I must tell you this because you're a sports person. I never took a lesson, ever. I have never been to a driving range. I don't take a single practice swing. My golf buddies are here, ask them what's my score <laughs> So just by keep… keep playing you… No, you... I just hit the ball. <laughs> People are trying to beat somebody, I just hit the ball. And my handicap is below ten now 
I've never been to a driving range, most people won't believe, but I've never practiced on a driving range. I never once take a practice swing on the course, never taken a lesson. That requires a little bit of talent also. So don't get fooled that, you know, I just go and hit, that requires talent also. No, no. See, it needs some physical balance, of course, which a whole lot of people have. It's not that they don't have, they just don't have mental balance. So I… I described this, you know, I was featured in the Golf Digest in the United States. So this guy came and said, he's a good player, he's a scratch player. So said, Sadhguru, how do you do this? I said, see, seventy percent of golf in my perception is just mental. I'm just playing seventy percent. Remaining thirty percent golf, I don't know a damn thing about it, I don't play that. <laughs> I just play the mind game. <laughs> so, but that's so true for any sports. Any sport, but more true where there is no competition. Competition means nobody is trying to grab your ball at least <laughs> That was lovely, sir. Uh, of course, one more video for me. Guys, uh, just take all the cue. Make sure you don't forget it. If you do forget it, grab the YouTube video and uh, just stay happy. Just stay happy, guys. So, uh, it's, uh, I feel it's very important that uh, football should go to rural India. We are been kind of pushing the government for this. As a part of this, now they announced one thing, the central government, it'll take still a long time to implement. But they announced this already a month ago, saying that only fifty percent of the time that a child spends in the school will be dedicated for academics. The remaining fifty percent will be for sport, music, art <laughs> So, <clears throat> beyond… beyond your time as a player, we would like to see that you make a difference in rural India because that's where the people are. I would… I would love to, sir. City boys are too fat, they can't run, they can't run. <laughs> Don't take it in the wrong way, but that's true with my sports at least. Uh, sir Alex Ferguson was asked this question, sir, that if you have… what is the best thing about football? So he answered, that if you have two kids at their birth with the same talent, everything same, you give one to the rich family and one to the poor family <laughs> and give them everything same, the nutrition, the food, the training, the odds are the one who is from the poor family will make it big in football. That's so, so I truly believe. <laughs> That's so, so with most things, unfortunately. Because unfortunately, this has become the reality of the world because human beings are living so compulsively. See, the idea of wealth, the idea of affluence is so that obstacles of survival are removed. The daily I don't have to fight for my bread means if I want to play football, I can play football all out. But unfortunately, most human beings don't make use of their affluence like this. As n societies become affluent, as nations become affluent, you will see that we just producing a whole lot of people who good for nothing. People do not use their affluence, their comfort levels for excelling in something. They will use it against themselves. So, Bangalore City, I want you to understand, though you have a messy traffic, you are living better than most people who live in rural India. You must appreciate that and… <clears throat> and see that you don't have to fight for daily bread when such a relief is there, you must use this life and this energy for doing something significant. I don't care what you do, but you must do something well, it's important. In this life, you must do something that you can really do it well. Whether you can kick a ball or you can meditate or you can act or you can sing or you can be a doctor, it doesn't matter what, but you must do something really well. If you don't do that, uh, the problem with life is even if you don't do anything, it just passes by. It doesn't stop. And the problem with life is, or the beauty of life is, even if you live a life of a bum, you still pass. <laughs> they don't detain you for bad life. <laughs> Thank that you. Is, that is so wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. It's a… I must say this, that when the entire country is, uh, you know, basically, sport starved, 
don't think people who are watching a cricket game know something about sport. They know only the runs on the scoreboard, they don't know much about the game, even the cricket game, I'm saying. Largely, most people know only the what's the end scare, uh, end score, who won, is there some spectacular action or no, this is all they're looking at. That is why from a test match we've come to 2020, <laughs> because spectacular action. <laughs> but at a time like this when India is not so much of a sporting country and particularly football is being laughed at, Sunil has taken football to a different level, has brought… <laughs> well, in this country, when there is no culture of football, he's taken it to a different level. Not only in the field, <laughs> not only on the football field, but uh, he did a fantastic thing in touching the conscience of Indian citizens that you being stupid not supporting the Indian football team when the matches are happening in your city, you don't even know it's happening. And that was a fantastic thing and I think after your, you know, goal scoring days are over, because I'm going to put you back five years so you may be <laughs> there for a long time. But after that, we want you to dedicate your time and energies to bring football to rural India because that is where the youth are strong and <laughs> and that's where the people are, sixty-five percent of the population is there <clears throat> If you ever want to create a football academy in the south, we may facilitate it for you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for the kind words uh, and the urban kids, do not lose heart, even you can become big players. Thank you very much.